Now I'm going to work in the sky area and um, I'm going to turn my board a little bit since all the sky area is on this side. I'm going to turn this around this way and I'm going to bring some water across this whole sky area. And I'm going to get that wet and then I'm going to lay in the sky using this wet and wet technique. Now I don't have to actually go around every single edge up here but I am going to preserve a little bit of light right on this outside edge here so I'm going to wet this sky area don't really have to worry too much about how delicate we are because it will be lighter and we can work our way around it but it isn't entirely necessary to to um, isolate the water to this area but if it starts to puddle and it's getting ready to break out of that I'll lay it down a little bit and you can see from the shine um, in the, the, the painting uh, right along this edge see that water how it's just beating up against there well great now we tip it back this way and let it run back and we're going to give it time to settle into the fiber of the paper since this is 100% rag paper, we want it to be nice and nice and wet, not on the surface, but on the inside, down deep in the fibers of it. So I'm going to just trace this edge a little bit over here, and I'm using a one-inch aquarelle brush. And once again, we see the beading right in this area. So I'm going to tip it back the other way. And you'll see it run back into the away from this edge. Now, once we put pigment into this area, it's gonna it's gonna stay here. It won't go past the edge of that bead. But let's just let this roll around a little bit and tip it. And let it roll. Then I'll set it back down again. Grab some of my color and start to work. Just clean that bead a little bit with a thirsty brush right here. And then I'll grab a little bit of yellow and I'm going to be very bold in my sky today because it is an evening sky or the end of the day and I'm going to put a bunch of color in here and let it run down into these edges and a little more red over here saying oh no he's gone crazy with his color well not so much uh, not so bad and once again I'll let that run around you can see it running down in here I'll let it just tip and move I'll bring some yellow up in this area making kind of an orange this will be quite dark up against this edge so I'll bring it up against there and whatever goes behind a shape needs to come out again so I'll bring some of this same red over there and I'm going to preserve some lights up in this area. But now I'm going to be very bold with my blue. And I've still got my board tipped up slightly, as you can see. And so that, that the paint will move as I want it to move. So now I'm going to bring some blue in here and watch what happens. I'm not going to mix it on the palette. I'm going to let it mix out here into this paint that's already there and let this pigment mingle in these areas and make a big dark fun dramatic sky with this and this turns these colors that are already down in here into a nice gray a, a strong hard gray and I want a strong gray around this edge right here because this is going to and be lighted up on this side and that'll cause a great deal of drama to happen in there and I'm going to let this come down out of this side across there and I'm going to let it run back once again a little bit of blue that's going to come in across this area I want my lines to move into the painting and lead towards the center of interest and then tip all that back and let it run wildly around 
and mix together. Now you'll be surprised at how, uh, how, how much the pigment does mingle and how soft these edges become. Right now these look like lines, but that's going to just migrate. The pigment's going to migrate across there and it's just going to be very, very soft in a minute. So what we want to do is, is we want to put our pigments down and then let them alone. Let them alone. Now I'm going to come in here with a, a little more of my ultramarine blue and now I'm going to do some blue sky area. These are our cloud shapes but now I'm going to have a little bit of blue come in and I'm going to be judicious with that. I'm going to preserve these lights but this blue is going to come right down against this edge and then once again keeping with these shapes that we're doing we're going to let the clouds part a little bit over here I'm letting these little white areas come in and I'm going to bring this down again leaving these lights and this looks very dramatic right now but the, by the time we uh, bring our um, darks into here this this will just settle back it won't be anywhere near this this dramatic at that point but let's just crawl some of these blues back into it and work away from this edge and come this direction we're making kind of a fan shape as they crawl up as we come down along the horizon I want some more purple shapes to to uh, to come out of these these clouds so I'm using a little bit of magenta down in here with my blue and coming off I don't want to cut the sheep's head off just yet okay and see how this is just turned into kind of a dark glow up in there right now it's not near as strong as it was a couple of minutes ago good it's just the way we want it now mix a little blue in here and come down and make these intervals closer together as we approach the the horizon line make these intervals narrower now I'm going to come up here I've left some blue up in it or some some uh, blue sky up in that area but we've still got to bring some of it down and form the outside edge and I'm going to kind of rough that edge up a little bit and finish this down because I want that blue to come out the other side there. And then I'll just continue that blue down a little lighter as it reaches the horizon. Now that's a pretty dramatic sky. You're saying, wow, I don't know, that's a, that's a lot. But once we get the rest of the painting in here, you're going to see that that's going to push down a little bit. Two things happen here. The pigments migrate and what did look like really strong blues, now that's turned into a very pleasant gray up in here with orange showing through, red showing through, yellow showing through. Gives the feeling that it is the end of the day or when we start to pick up that color on the underside of the clouds. And that's going to be much more dramatic than what we started with up here. But we've got these lines coming down into it that we've uh, kind of planned in our thumbnail study. So we're going to let that dry right now and um, it, the pigment always dries lighter in watercolor. Okay, now we're going to wait. We just sit on our hands and we wait. We never go back into these washes. We do it just this, put it down, let it happen, and live with it. Uh, if we sit there and start diddling with it now, we're going to get some oozles and cauliflowers and funny shapes up in there. And then you're going to want to take your towel and start dabbing at it and everything else. No need of that. You know, you can do a little bit of softening later, but don't keep messing with it right now or we'll lose all this beautiful soft quality watercolor gives us right off the bat. So let's sit and wait for a little while now.